Hello friends, the dreaded midlife crisis. So easy to lose sight of our identity during that time, feel lost and without purpose. But simply put, it's not a fun time, but it doesn't have to be that way. My guest today is the author of Midlife Battle Cry, Redefining the Mighty Second Half. Don Barton is an author, speaker, entrepreneur, and mentor. She uses her personal journey to help others find happiness and fulfillment in their lives. Join the conversation as we break down the stigmas and redefine what it means to enter the second half of our lives. Welcome to today's show. We are talking with Don Barton about a midlife battle cry. That's the name of her new book. And Don, I am so excited to have you on this program. You're, you're my online friend, and I would love to be your real life friend. Uh, you are an amazing woman of God. Uh, I'm so excited to be here. Just to, uh, This is like getting to spend time with you, but we absolutely need to make it happen. You just we need do. to come sit on the sofa with me. <laughs> yes. Well, you are contagious, and I've just seen how God has worked so much through your life, and you have a new book. It's called Midlife Battle Cry. Tell us about this book and uh, what inspired it. Oh, gosh. A, a midlife crisis it absolutely inspired oh, wow. it, entering <laughs> into you know a, a season of life where yeah. Um, I had gone from a fast-paced life and a fast-paced career into um, a very quiet season where I felt a little bit forgotten, mm. a little invisible, kind of like um, the world was done with me, a racehorse been put out to pasture. Wow. And, um, and I just decided, you know, after talking to all my friends, we were kind of all feeling the same way. And, and it wasn't that it was the beginning of the end. It was just a pivot point. So mm. I, uh, th this book was birthed out of a, a a hard pivot point. Wow. You know, I think there's, it, there's many women who are our age who are experiencing that very same thing. And uh, I guess that's part of the natural progression of life. But I'm also witnessing that there are young women, young mothers uh, who are experiencing this exact same feeling. And they're just wondering, what's my purpose? And, you know, is what is the meaning of all this? Can you really just give a little hope to those people who are, are feeling all the external pressures that, that the mm -hmm. world is experiencing right now and uh, you know, how they can find that, that focus and that purpose and that hope again. You know, it's funny you said that because when we did a survey over what people perceived as midlife, the answer was 37 to 65. Oh my. And I think that midlife is also, like I said, it's really just a pivot point, a redefining of self. Because I think we experience it when we're with, at moms with little ones at home and we're like, oh my gosh, what happened to me? You know, I haven't bathed in two weeks. Where did I go? Yeah. And that kind of season <laughs> into, you know, midlife of the kids are gone. Who am I now? Um, what is, you, you know, I'm not what I used to be, but that's just it. I think that they are these beautiful seasons that God gives us to redefine who we are. Mm. And for me, honestly, mine started in the kind of craziest of ways. I, I walked in my closet and I looked at it and I thought, this looks, you know, like a, a Morticia Adams, you know, <laughs> uh, a, a fashion show in here. It was black, <laughs> gray, and maybe a dash of white. But I used to love to wear color. And yeah. I thought, what happened to me? Where did I go? Wow. And then the next day I heard a song that I loved and I mm. thought, you used to have playlists and CDs and listen to stuff. Mm. When did you quit listening to stuff that stirred your soul? Mm. And so it started kind of a little journey back to self and made me realize this, it isn't the beginning of the end. It was just a little bit of give it point. Wow. That's, you know, that can be a real harsh reality. And, and I've had moments like that. And I think for me, it's, it's been about liminal spaces where God is kind of pushing me into a new, it's a transition, you know, almost a metamorphosis, if you will, where we kind of have to go into that unknown space of saying, there's going to be some new discoveries for me. It's a rites of passage, you know, where we, we learn and discover new things about ourselves as we invite the person of the Holy Spirit into the experience to say, give me wisdom here. And really, I think, don't you think that uh, that's where purpose and new vision really comes from? Yeah, I think it's in seasons where he kind of calls us to be still. And I don't know about you, but I, I don't 
do particularly well in those seasons. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, give me a spreadsheet and color code it, God. I just, come on. Um, but, you know, I, I think that we uh, are the best we've ever been. You know, this mm -hmm. midlife season, we, we know more than we ever have. We've experienced more. We've lost more. We've loved more. We've failed more and gotten back up. But it tends to be a season where we kind of pull back. Mm -hmm. And we start to hand the microphone, forgive me, over to somebody in their 20s who doesn't really even know what a chin hair is yet. Right. But this is the time when we shouldn't pull back. You know, yeah. this is our wisdom mm. is such a blessing. And this is the time to stand on the mountaintops and go, hey, I still have a lot to offer and I'm still here. Our bodies may have changed and may not be the same, but the rest of us is the best it's ever, ever been. Wow, that's powerful. And you're spot mm. on because, you know, it's women in our season that when we're feeling like we don't have much left to offer in terms of maybe what's on the outside, it's the, mm. that rich content of wisdom from the inside of living a seasoned life, having made the mistakes, having walked through the pain of it, having right. confronted all the lies that gives us, it brings us to a place of such freedom that we can then pour into that next generation and be a voice and be the salt of the earth I mean, that is what we're called to do. And I love what you said, and I want you to expound on that a little bit about rediscovering the things that you love, the music. And for me, mm. I've, I've been recently saying, get out in nature and take a walk and smell the, the fresh air and you know the, the herbaceous, out here in California, there's uh, eucalyptus trees and these riverbeds that just smell so wonderful. And you know, to be able to get outside and get in touch, back in touch with the creation, also, it, it also kind of reconnects me again to another side of the creator and the joy mm -hmm. of, and the enchantment, if you will, of all that he has given to us. Speak into the importance of simplifying and getting back to what's really important in this in this era of devices and social media mm. and all the things that distract mm -hmm. us. As I'm thinking about all the things you are saying and in full agreement, I'm thinking about the fact that so many of us are believing that we have this invisible line in life, right? And yeah. to one side of it um, was our youth and yeah. our bodies mm -hmm. were harder and we, we moved a little <laughs> faster. Um, but we also wrongfully believe it was the part of life where the most blessings happen children, careers, wow. marriages, all that, that like, and we subconsciously believe it's going to be devoid of that on the other side. And that mm -hmm. is completely wrong because there's no midlife to God. You know, he calls us to live full out all the way. Oh, that's so um, good. But, I, but I think that getting back to something as simple as, and I'm so embarrassed to say that it actually took me time to think about what is my favorite color to wear? Yeah. Just some of those, and it's one of the chapters in the book, it's the 21 days to I love me, where I really sat back and I thought, who am I now? Not in my twenties, not in my thirties, mm -hmm. who is Dawn today? And what do I like? Do I, um, what foods do I like? Where do I want to go? Where, you know, what smells do I like? Scents and candles. I know this sounds so silly, but I was that out of touch with who I am today. So I think taking mm -hmm. some time to get back to that simplistic love of self um, mm -hmm. and in doing so this journey with God that's a little bit deeper, you know, as, as you do it, I think yeah. there's something beautiful. And I don't know if it's our age. I mean, I look at, uh -huh. I'm bird watching now. It's like, I'm like, <laughs> what, what, why do we do this with nature? Like, oh, I love it. <laughs> but there is a beautiful thing I think that happens with oh, nature yeah. and this, uh, a, a decision to move more. I know that in yeah. my 50s, like maybe it's a, I'm also in caretaker right now. Um, and maybe it's seeing those that are at, truly at the end, mm -hmm. that is a little more motivating to mm -hmm. embrace his gifts for us now. Yeah. I don't know, but I think there's something beautiful about the nature part in the season of life. Oh, that is so true. And really, mm -hmm. um, I think in these, these spaces, we have to be mindful of the fact that they, they can be uncomfortable, but what you're saying tells me that we need to embrace that uncomfortableness. We need to be able to say, okay, this may feel new to me, 
but I'm gonna discover something here that is purposeful, that is meaningful, and let it take me to a new development. Uh, to, and, and to really, I think we all have these kind of inner rooms, if you will, that we have to discover, and maybe we were too afraid or too ignorant, we didn't have certain knowledge you know, in our youth, that, like you said, there's something about maturing that we mm -hmm. relax down a little bit and and then we decide okay lord i he knows we, we he's going to give us the courage to be able to face and open up sometimes it's pandora's box and and go look at the examine what's inside and what has brought me to where i am today now don you have a story uh you've got a backstory you've been through some incredibly difficult things in your past would you share a little bit of, of some of what God's done in your life and, and some of the difficulties you've had to face? Absolutely. You know, I, I think um, in looking back at life, if anybody ever asked me, I, I would tell you that I've had this magnificently joyful life. But actually, when you read it on paper, it doesn't look that right. Way. So I, I have um, uh, I've lost a child who died from a mm. rare bacteria of pneumonia. Mm. I, someone broke in my home. I was raped. He was caught. It went to a full jury trial. I battled stage three triple negative breast cancer, and I, I won. <laughs> Spoiler mm. alert. <laughs> um, excuse me, but my sister passed away from cancer. My mm. mother had a brain aneurysm that ruptured, and my husband battled alcoholism and is eight years sober now. But it was a life, if you look at it, that you people are going, wow. It just, but it, it was a rich life because in, you know, in the tsunamis of pain birthed a beautiful um, relationship with the Lord that I didn't have. You know, it, all those things brought me to him. Yeah. And it birthed my, my first book, Laughing Through the Ugly Cry. I had a fast paced career. I was doing really, actually it was number seven in Mary Kay Cosmetics. I was the number seven wow. sales director. <laughs> and I had a, I know. And um, I had a dream and God said, you're gonna write a book. And I'm like, oh no, I'm not. I like, I don't journal, I don't make lists. You Good. have the wrong girl, go two, two doors down. Yeah, and so he said, wake up, wake up. I always acknowledge I sound a little crazy when I tell that part of the story. But um, <laughs> that is what happened. And, and the next day I Googled, how do you write a book? Oh, and I love it. Um, yeah, and he called me to take a leap of faith out of my career. And, uh, and I did. And that book became a bestseller. And I, I earned the title of New Christian Author of the Year. And it's just crazy that it all came together. Incredible. But, um, yeah, but after that is when that midlife crisis stopped, hit, and but it birthed yeah. another book. So, wow. Well, you know, God does bring us through seasons, and there's purpose for each season, and He has used your story and your voice so much. And I, I want to, in in our next session, I want to get into a little bit more of what it looks like to win the battle, and uh, how we kind of talk back to our circumstances, so to speak. So we have to take a quick break, but for you that are watching from home, don't go away because Don has so much more to say. We'll be right back. Have you experienced life-altering disappointments on the road of good intentions? Has the pressure to keep a successful image caused you to feel isolated, overwhelmed, and not good enough? Listening to such lies will eventually cause you to become frustrated, lonely, and unfulfilled. There is another voice calling you toward authentic joy and freedom. Discover this truth and arm yourself to effectively win the war on your identity. Brenda Crouch's book, Fight Forward, Reclaim the Real You, is a beautiful depiction of how she overcame sexual abuse, domestic violence, and a victim identity to embracing a life that is thriving. You too can fight the lies and heal the wounds intended to hijack your soul and reach your God-given potential. Here's what people are saying. If you have ever vowed that you will never be hurt again, then this book is for you. It was God's perfect timing for me to read this book. Brenda's advice gave me the freedom to let go and let God mend my heart. It's exactly what I needed. This book is like healing oil to my deepest hurts. I praise God for Brenda's courage to tell her story and help women like me. God created you to win and it's never too late to change the trajectory of your life. Order a copy for yourself or a friend today and begin your journey of discovery. Available at brendacrouch.com, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, christianbooks.com. Paul and Brenda Crouch here, baby. We have great plans. 
coming up. We do. We're here in Anaheim at our beautiful studio that God has provided, but what do we have coming up? We've got amazing content coming up that we're actually very excited about. We just finished season four, and we have plans to do some broadcasting from around the world, mm -hmm. uh, different locations, and God's opening doors for us. Amen. But they say you have not because you ask not. Mm -hmm. And in four years, we have never asked for a donation or any yeah. kind of support, and now we are. It's our heart to see that media is done right and that we give God glory for everything. And we just are following the call and we're doing it honest. And uh, we hope that you will catch the vision and ride this wave with us and know Amen. that it, God is gonna continue to pour more and more out as we follow in obedience to him. Amen. Go to Brenda's website. There's all kinds of resources there for giving. God bless you. BrendaCrouch.com. And we're back with my friend, Don Barton. And Don, you've got a chapter in your book. It's called Hail to the No. I want to know what That's that right. is all about. <laughs> well, I think one of the great, you know, we talk about all the <laughs> difficult things that happen in this midlife. And yeah. It gets harder and our body doesn't do this and our hair doesn't grow the way we want all that. But one of the things that is really great is this sort of empowering thing that we get to just start saying, uh, no, no. not going to do it. Don't want to do that anymore. It's not who I am. No. And yep. nope. And no. Um, mm. I think one of my big things was I healed. Now Ooh. I haven't had it really come up, but maybe I will. It may come up or something. Um, but I just, I just one day thought these are miserable. <laughs> I, and I, hurt my feet. I don't <laughs> like them. And so, no, I'm not doing it. And if I do, it's like the world's biggest chunky heel, you know, yes. just this huge thing. And, um, and I also decided no to underwires. I love it. For my lady, yeah. my braziers. <laughs> I was like, there are great ones out there where you don't have to wear that anymore. I don't have to. Oh, and, come on. you know, I started deciding that I like to go to bed at 8, 30, 8, 45 at night. I just do. Uh -huh. I love to get up super early. I'm not, I'm just saying no to things that are super late at night. I just yes. am not, that's not who I am anymore. <laughs> so I think that is such a great celebratory season and place yeah. to be um, at midlife and beyond, just embracing more of who we are mm -hmm. and what we say yes to and no yeah. to. And some of that actually is relationships, you know, yeah. um, those that are figuring out relationships that fill our cups yeah. when we're around certain people, do you feel better for having been with them mm. or do you feel worse? And I'm not talking, I think in some seasons, mm -hmm. uh, we do pour out to a friend in need. Right. Um, but when it's continual and we're talking about continual, you get to reevaluate that inner circle and is it healthy and good? Yeah. And if it's not, no. That is so good. And really those, it's like aha moments, I think. that That's how it is for mm -hmm. me. And I, I realize, you know what, I don't like that. Why have I done that my whole right. life? And it really would always go back to being rooted in people pleasing or wanting to be wow. accepted. And, and I, you know, women since the, the dawning of time have been subjected to a lot of that. And I think women are starting to wake up and realize we have our our own uniqueness and there's nothing wrong with having different expressions of who we are and embracing the the honesty of who we are that's how god wants right. us to be he wants us to come right. honest to the table instead of always wearing a mask and so i you know in a, in a sense i i really think that uh it's stories like yours ministries like yours and this book it's going to help deliver people from that that old mindset of thinking i've got to i've got to be a certain way or act a certain way and really just to come free and that that means we come mm -hmm. home right and it's like coming home completely yeah absolutely you know i think one of the i'm from the south um y'all probably didn't pick that up at all uh, <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> but I'm from the <laughs> South and a culture that really reveres women in their cooking abilities. I'm actually from Louisiana, right. which is just an area that's so all about food. Yes. And I'm the first generation that just doesn't find enjoyment out of cooking. And I, I don't want to be flipping like I just don't cook. I truly don't find enjoyment out of it. And it's hard for me. I've cried more over a <laughs> stove than I have like business things ever in my life. <laughs> um, and just to finally with 
pride yeah. and grace say, yeah, I don't, I don't like those things anymore. Yeah. And that's okay. That's okay to mm -hmm. know that about yourself yeah. and to be honest about it. Yeah. Listen, the Proverbs, the Proverbs 31 woman was all about delegating those things right. to other, other people. And that's how she got things done. And, and uh, I think that's an example for us to just be free from the pressure to mm. perform and for us to begin to walk in total authenticity. That's, that's mm -hmm. just beautiful. And I love that. Yeah. So you also talk about rescuing yourself in your book. Mm -hmm. How does that, how does that work when, when somebody's bound up uh, by all these things? Oh, I, I, how do we go is, there? This is so big because this is an empowering season of life, but it can feel a little bit defeating. Right. So sometimes I think we just need the permission of somebody else saying, you can be an active participant in your own rescue. Yeah. It is up to you to change the story mm -hmm. from here on out. Mm -hmm. The story may have been one way this direction, mm -hmm. but you get to write something beautiful and new the other side. And sometimes that, like I said, I don't know what that looks like for you. I don't, you know, a person, I don't know what situation she is, but nobody will fight harder for you mm -hmm. than you. And you need to be the number one advocate for you and to fight to figure out who you are again, to fall in love with yourself again, and then to be the person you want to be. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you get to define who that is and make her and, you know, the, the woman you want to be. Yeah. Do you think that that's part of the imprint that God has placed on each and every, every one of us is this uniqueness? And, and I mean, how does God come into play here in, in discovering our identity in, in discovering that identity in Christ. Speak to that a little bit. I'll speak to that in, from a personal standpoint. When I had been in seasons of um, pity parties, and I throw mm. a great one, don't get me wrong. You know, <laughs> I, I throw them often and they're big and fa fantastic. But oh. I don't feel like God put me or anyone else here to simply exist with Netflix, right? And I'm yeah. really good at it. Give me some ice cream and some Netflix. I do it better <laughs> than most people I know. But that was not what I, he did not give me giftings, all the giftings he did. You know, I didn't figure out that I loved to speak until I was 40 years old. My first book didn't come out until I was 50 years old. So if we pull back from opening up all the rest of the gifts, what a sad story would that be? I don't want to arrive, you know, stand in front of God with a whole bunch of unopened gifts and him go, oh, I gave you that one and oh, and that one, oh, and that one was so good. And you never even opened it because you were just scared. Oh, and so-and-so said something mm -hmm. about that one. So you never even, even looked any further to that one. But what mm -hmm. a sad story that is to tell. And I just don't want to live that life. I don't want to go before him with all these unopened gifts just yeah. out of fear. That's really good because fear mm -hmm. is actually uh, rooted in lies and it's meant to mm. seize us. I mean, the, the enemy of right. our soul comes to kill, steal and destroy. destroy. And he often will come through fear. He uses fear mm. to torment us. And those fears, I mean, there are certain fears that are just naturally good for us to, in the sense of having yeah, boundaries right. and, and understanding safety. But... Um, you know, there are some fears that are, uh, they seize us and they, they will actually marginalize who we are. And uh, so you're speaking to this area that sometimes people need deliverance and they need to be able to renew their mind through the word of God to be able to understand, okay, how does God see me? And, and, mm -hmm. and understand that he's been with me all along. He, I have not... Mm -hmm. uh, fallen prey to anything that I have been afraid of, but God has always preserved me. He's always been there to see me through. Um, tell us, uh, are there any kind of um, success stories of anybody that you've worked with um, or just testimonies of how your story and your books have touched other lives? I know they have around the world. Tell us a story about somebody that's just made a huge change. So funny you ask that. Um, when I wrote the, when I went to write the first book, you know, keeping in mind, I'm a little wired for achievement. It's mm -hmm. just kind of, I'm not saying it's a good thing, but I'm, I'm more wired that way. And somebody mm -hmm. in the very beginning said, if you're going to write a book, you have to be okay that God called you to write it for one person. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget. It was probably six months in. I, I had a woman going through cancer mm -hmm. telling me that if you, I don't know, you know, anything else in your life, but I want you to know, I feel like God, I am the one person 
God called you to write this book for. And um, she was feeling defeated and hurt and sad going through chemotherapy is not really an uplifting process, you know. Um, right. And, and just to be able to, and she just said, now I, I've switched it to believe that maybe this is a blessing and maybe great gifts are going to come out of it. And maybe I'll be able to help more people through it because of what I'm going through and my personal hardships, I'll be able to pull others along. So mm. that is what I call the paycheck of the heart. You just can't even, you know, and I, I read them to my husband and he was like, oh my gosh, oh, he's a ball of mush. I'm a ball of mush. <laughs> and those kind of messages just yeah. Um, oh, they just touch my heart so much, you know. Mm, they really do. And, and it's what keeps us going, doing what we do. Because it, we were talking earlier before the show, it's, it's hard work. It's not glamorous work mm. whenever you have mm. purpose. And I hope that's an encouragement to somebody today that, you know, we live in a world of social media and all these millions of platforms. And we watch people from the windows of performance and glamour and you know we're in a celebrity culture and that's really not life that is not what yeah. what real life looks like and so when you know i i think that you have such a way of being able to point out that our extraordinary experiences are actually going to be found in the ordinary places of our life there's somebody i'm sure that's watching today dawn that feels like they're at the end of their rope and um, they think they've already lived their best life and uh, they're in a place of not really knowing how to go forward, how to make that baby step. Would you just take a minute and minister to that person, encourage them? Oh my goodness. You know, I hear that and that just breaks my heart. I wish I was there to give you the world's biggest, longest, almost uncomfortably too long hug yeah. because I want you to know that God is not done with you. This mm -hmm. is not the beginning of the end. This is the beginning of simply a next chapter, a beautiful chapter. And he has so much in store for you. So don't pull back right now. Don't stop. Don't quit loving on people. You are needed. This world needs you. We need you more than you can even yes. wrap your mind around. And you are so very loved. Yes. Amen. And you have a mm -hmm. wonderful uh, outreach to women at your place. Is it a farm, a ranch in Florida? Tell us a little bit about that uh, real quickly. We do. We, we have 23 acres just outside of Pensacola, Florida. So we have the beaches and then we have, we look like we're out in the country with all these big, it used to be a pecan orchard. And ah. we have women's, uh, uh, women's retreats out here. We have horses and dogs, but we really are just a family that lives out here but I prayed so hard to be able to get it that I promised God that if he would give oh. it to us, I would always honor him here. So oh. we do Christian women's retreats and oh. I love it. It's just, I, I love it so much. And mom and dad and my mother-in-law's in this house. We have a teenager. We got, you know, my husband, it's just the whole, it's the clampets go to the country. Oh, I love that. And I've seen pictures and man, it makes me want to come. I'd love to come and join you sometime. Oh. How can we find you online? Uh, you can find me, I'm most active on Instagram, Dawn R. Barton, and you can find me at my website at dawnbarton.com. Thank you so much, my friend, for being with me today. You're a joy. It was such a pleasure. I'm so glad we got to do this. We'll do it again. And friends, I want to thank you for joining with us, too. I know that you take time out of your schedule in the hopes of gleaning and finding a message of hope. And, and I know that that Dawn's story has brought that to you today. Go find her book because it's gonna enrich your life. And we invite you again next time on Inside Voice. I'm Brenda Crouch.